This is the Happy Families Podcast with Dr. Justin Coulson, where Luke and Susie, a husband and wife radio team with three young boys. This is the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants some answers now. Take my hand, Sus. Yeah, that's lovely because you know my love language is physical touch. Yes. So this, this was a big thing for us it when was. we first started dating because uh, you, when we had our first fight... The last thing you wanted to do was, you know, put your hand on my shoulder or do anything. And everything I needed was so desperately for you to put my ha- your hand on my shoulder and say everything's still okay. <laughs> and we realised this whole love language thing was big for us as, yes. as trying to you know, form our, our relationship. Imagine how important it is for developing little human beings like our kids. Yeah, exactly. Do you know your child's love language? It's a big question and we're going to have a look at it with Dr. Justin Coulson from happyfamilies.com.au. How are you, Justin? Hello, Susie. Hi, Luke. I'm great. How are you? Yeah, yeah good. really well, thank what you. What are your oh. love languages? Yeah, what are yours? Oh, oh, all of them. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm high needs. Yeah. <laughs> I've always said that. I've always said that. Yeah. High maintenance, Dr. Justin Coulson. Yeah, mine's a given. Right. And it could be anyone on any given day. Yeah, yeah Susie, Susie is only one of them. But it changes every day. Yeah, that's right. Um, but there's no doubt that uh, physical touch is, is my, my mm, number one. Absolutely. No question about it. But we don't often – we got the book for our wedding, um, a, a wedding present, The Five Love Languages, but I, I don't know that I have actually applied it to my children. Yeah, so the book is by uh, – he's a, he's a pastor uh, in the United States. His name is Gary Chapman. Now, he doesn't have a psychology qualification, and there's a few things as a psych guy that, that I just don't quite – they don't quite resonate and work perfectly for me. But I've kind of rewritten the love languages a little bit and, and shifted them around a little bit and, and made them work, I think, in a way that, well, it, it works better for me and I think right. it works better psychologically. And so, so basically, instead of having these five love languages that he identifies, I've, I argue that there are two universal love languages. These are the two love languages that every one of us has, whether you're a Luke or a Susie or, you know, or a Justin or whatever. And, and they are time and understanding you see if we want our relationships to flourish we've got to put time into them Uh, something that i love to share in the workshops that i present around the country is that just like dollars are the currency of our economy attention is the currency of our relationships yeah true when we have a relationship that is falling apart or that is failing quite often we'll find that at the root of it there's insufficient time being put into it. And if our relationships are not good with our kids, it's simply because we're not giving them enough time. Yeah. The second universal love language uh, that I think we, we all have is the love language of understanding. We all want to be understood. We want to be understood more than we want to be loved. We want to be understood. And when we're not, we, we get so upset, we feel so frustrated, we feel completely hemmed in. And it's like, hang on, you're not listening to me. You don't know what I'm saying. You don't know what I'm feeling. And I'll give you an example of how bad we are at this as parents. We were at uh, an indoor rock climbing center not long ago. And my, my nine-year-old daughter had climbed to the top of the rock wall and she was on an automatic belay. So normally, you know, you've got the rope hooked up and you've got someone at the bottom and they belay you. That is, they, they hold the rope so that if you fall, you won't do anything you just sort of swing out and go back to the wall and you'll be safe there's nobody at the bottom for the automatic belay it just the the rope retracts up into the roof and then you let go of the wall and it catches you and lowers you back down and she was at the top of this wall and she was freaking out she didn't want to let go because she didn't trust that the rope would catch her as she Mm. descended to the floor and i was at the bottom saying annie come on it's not that big a deal just let go of the wall it'll catch you it's okay and she's like dad i can't do it and she was freaking out and i wasn't understanding her particularly well i mean i got what was going on cognitively but in my heart i wasn't feeling the fear and the anxiety that she was feeling while she was eight meters up this wall too scared to let Mm -hmm. go and finally i said annie i know how scary it is for you i know that it's really hard to trust that the rope will catch you but it will trust me, it'll work out, let go. And eventually she let go and she came down to the ground like over a hug. And about 10 minutes later, I was climbing a different wall and I was on auto belay. I'd never used it before. And I got to the top and then I realized that I was in exactly the same position as Annie. (laughs) I had to let go. And I didn't want to. (laughs) I was freaking out, let me tell you. And, And I had this sudden realization that I had not fully understood 
how Annie was feeling. Mm. And she needed my understanding at that point. And I needed some understanding. And I called out to the guy that worked there. I said, if I let this, if I let go, is this going to catch me? And he just laughed and he said, yeah, do it. And I freaked out and I let go and it, and it caught me. But it was a wonderful reminder that if we don't know how things are for our children, you know, when they're being bullied at school and they're really hurting and we say, suck it up, princess, go to school, drink some concrete and harden up. Mm. You know, if when we say that sort of stuff to them, they don't feel understood. And it is a universal love language. We need it yeah. so that we can so that we can function well in our relationships. Mm. So time and understanding are these universal love languages. There are three more in your system of love languages. We're going to talk about those next. Dr. Justin Coulson, our guest from happyfamilies.com.au, asking the question, do you know your child's love language? Are you endlessly nagging, shouting, pleading, threatening and demanding that your children behave? Do you live in a dictatorship where the kids are in charge? Time Out is not your only option, is an e-book with discipline strategies and ideas that work. And they work without you carrying a load of parental guilt around all day. No more yelling, threatening, bribing or timeouts. From day one, you'll notice the difference in your children and they'll notice the difference in you. Time Out is not your only option by Dr. Justin Coulson. Available as an e-book and an audio book at happyfamilies.com.au. This is the Happy Families podcast with Dr. Justin Coulson. We are Luke and Susie, and this is the podcast for time-poor parents who just want answers now. And today, it's all about our children's love language. Now, you were talking about, uh, Justin, about how you've kind of reframed the five love languages of Gary, of, of Gary Chapman to time and understanding being universal. We all need those. But there's three more that you have there. Can you explain those to us? Yeah, so they're touch me, tell me, show me. The touch me's are people like Luke. You, you, know, you know, you just crave somebody acknowledging your presence by reaching out and squeezing your elbow or putting their arm around your shoulder or holding your hand or giving you a hug. Touch me's love to snuggle in bed and you just lay there and hold on to one another and go, oh, you know, this is wonderful. I love you. And, and, and our children quite often will be touch me's as well. They love to be acknowledged. They love to feel our presence close to them. Then we've got the tell me's. These are the people who love to be told, I love you, you're special to me, you're wonderful. And there's a lot of children who really thrive and really flourish when they get that kind of a um, that, that kind of verbal acknowledgement that they're loved. And, of course, you, you know that some kids hate that. You know when you give some kids a compliment and tell them how much you love them and they yeah. just sort of go all squirmy and squishy and say, don't say stuff like that, it's embarrassing. <laughs> And then there's the show me's. These are the ones who love it when we give them treats and give them gifts and, and show them by doing things for them. And now, like I said earlier, some people are really high maintenance, whether they're children or adults, and they're all five. Some people uh, are only really um, just the, you know, the two universal ones plus one of those other three. Yeah. But when we can tap into the love languages of our family, whether it's our kids or whether it's our spouse or even our mother-in-law, and we can express to them love in the way that they like it to be expressed to them. It's just wonderful yeah. for family relationships. Our, yeah, our seven-year-old's been going through a phase, Justin, where he's constantly saying to her every single day, often multiple times a day, you're the best mum ever and you're the best dad ever. I love you. And he's, he's very verbal in that. And it makes me think he's in that phase of discovering what his own love language is, that, that he's using words and that's showing us that he likes words mm. as well. Is what I'm starting to think with this little seven-year-old who's reaching an age of reason. And one of the five-year-olds won't let us go without a cuddle, and everything mm. everything's all about touch with with, with him. It's, it's it's fascinating to see them unravel. What do you re- what do you reckon, Suze? The three of them are. Oh, come on, give it give they're, us. They're they're all touch me, definitely. They're all very cuddly. Oh no, maybe less so Royden, but yeah. mostly touch me. Um, and tell me, yeah. So, so I reckon Royden's a tell me. Yeah. He, the, the, his lo- eyes light up, Justin, when you when you praise him and when you acknowledge him, when you tell him what a wonderful job. He's just eyes just get big and round. He doesn't necessarily say a lot back, but he certainly looks for it. Yeah, and you'll also notice that people will demonstrate their preferred love language by the way that they express love to others. So if you've got somebody who is always telling other people how much they love them, they're probably a tell me. And quite often, in marriages at least, you'll find that tell-me's will marry touch-me's or, <laughs> or, or show-me's. And, and there'll be this incompatibility. And, and the wife will say, he never tells me how much he loves me. He's always just trying to grab hold of me. Drives me crazy. 
And the bloke will be saying, she keeps on telling me how much she loves me, but she never really shows me by <laughs> you know, grabbing hold of me. And, 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 and so we need to watch what, 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 our, what our spouses and partners are doing and what our kids are doing so that we can respond the way they seem to express it the most, because that will usually be a, a really nice indicator of what their language of love is. No doubt my dad, the Aussie male, grew up as a show me. As far as he was concerned, he told us every day he loved us when he worked really hard and put food on the table and, and uh, did whatever it needed to, uh, to do to, to, to feed us and to house us. And that was his, his show me love, no question. Yeah, and then, and then we, we've got to make sure that we respond to the, to the tell me's as well by, by saying thank you. They, they just, if you're a tell me and you hear gratitude, oh my goodness. Mm. It just makes everything worthwhile. Oh, so good. It's good to explore this topic and start to actively think about what our children's love languages are so that we can make sure they always know that they're in a place where they are yeah. loved. Dr Justin Coulson from happyfamilies.com.au. Always great to catch up. Thanks so much for your time. Let's do it again soon. Thanks, guys. For more info and all of Justin's books, podcasts and programs, you can jump online to happyfamilies.com.au. And to find out how to have Justin speak at your school or you can come along to your organisation as well, go to justincoulson.com.au.